everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be discussing radiographic diagnosis of pulp and periapical lesions so let's get started so the first one is chronic pulpitis so chronic pulpitis is not never given as a radiographic diagnosis so what happens when you take an x-ray chronic pulpitis you will see a deep dental caries which will be involving enamel dentine and pulp so you can say diffuse radiolucency involving enamel dentine and pulp suggestive of deep dental caries with pulpal involvement you are not going to use the word chronic pulpitis because pulpitis is inflammation and we cannot see inflammation on a radiograph so therefore you will see a radiolucency which will be involving enamel dentine and pulp suggestive of deep dental caries with pulpal involvement is what you are going to write then coming to acute apical periodontitis so in acute apical periodontitis when you take an x-ray as you have seen in my previous class in which i discussed the clinical diagnosis the inf infection now travels from the pulp and reaches the peri apex so once it reaches the peri apex the inflammatory edema starts collecting this is your periodontal ligament can you see the space between your this is your bone this is your periodontium when in radiograph this is seen as a radiolucency and it is known as periodontal space so there will be con collection of inflammatory edema or inflammatory fluid in this periodontal space and when the fluid collection it starts there is you see widening of periodontal ligament space and you can also see loss of lamina dura so this boundary where you see of where the bone this is the boundary where you see between the periodontal ligament and the bone this there is a radio opaque line that you see that is known as lamina dura so there will be partial loss also of lamina dura can be seen so there can be widening of periodontal ligament space with or without loss of lamina dura in acute apical periodontitis then coming to acute periapical abscess so even acute periapical abscess you will see widening of periodontal ligament space with or without loss of lamina dura because there will be collection of pus in this region now when in acute periapical abscess there will be collection of pus and you will see that the lamina dura might be broken so you see same radiographic features in acute apical periodontitis and acute periapical abscess so depending on your clinical diagnosis your uh final diagnosis will be either acute apical periodontitis or acute periapical abscess so clinically the patient presents with fever or uh, the patient presents with vestibular obliteration and you will see that there is a widening of periodontal ligament space with or without loss of lamina dura in the radiograph then your final diagnosis becomes acute periapical abscess whereas if you see only the uh, tenderness and percussion clinically and in the radiograph you see widening of periodontal ligament space with or without loss of lamina dura your final diagnosis becomes acute apical periodontitis then coming to the fourth one which is the chronic periapical abscess you will see loss of lamina dura and you will also see because now there will be pus collection outside so you will see a diffuse radiolucency in the periapical aspect so you can write ill defined radiolucency seen in the periapical aspect in relation to this tooth suggestive of chronic periapical abscess in relation to the tooth whichever you are seeing then, then coming to periapical granuloma so in periapical granuloma you see the other characteristics you see widening of periodontal ligament space you can see loss of lamina dura and then you see a well defined radiolucency in the periapical aspect which is less than 1.5 cm in diameter according to freni and less than 2 cm in diameter according to white and farrow so whatever is being followed in your college you can follow that 
uh, that dimensions. And one more thing, that periapical granuloma can also present with a sclerotic border. So there will be a well-defined radiolucency which is surrounded by a sclerotic border. Then periapical cyst. So periapical cyst, you will again see a well-defined radiolucency. There will be a definite sclerotic border which will be seen and the diagnosis and it will be greater than 2 cm or greater than 1.5 cm depending upon what is being taught in your college. Then it can also present with resorption of uh, the, uh, the root in some cases periapical cyst and also you can see that there can be displacement of the adjacent tooth when the cyst enlarges in the radio apex. You can see that the adjacent tooth might get displaced. Then coming to periodontal abscess. So the difference, main difference between periodontal abscess and periapical abscess is that whatever the epicenter of the tooth, the epicenter of all the periapical lesions is going to be at the apex of the tooth. This is going to be at the tip of this uh, root. It is any lesion that is developing here, the center point will be the apex of the tooth. Whereas in periodontal abscess, you will see a radiolucency on the lateral aspect of the root. So this is the root. This is the lateral aspect of the root. So this is the peri apex of the root. So you will see a diffuse radiolucency on the lateral aspect of the root and suggestive of periodontal abscess. Then in some colleges, they are also giving the diagnosis of endoperio lesion. So it's not given in all the colleges, but they are giving it in some colleges. So in endoperio lesion, you will see a furcation involvement. There will be radiolucency in the furcation area and also there will be some kind of radiolucency either like this, ill-defined or well-defined in the periapex apex of the root so of the tooth so suggestive of endoperial lesion so basically you will see a furcation involvement and also a periapical lesion suggestive of endoperial lesion then coming to condensing mastitis so in condensing mastitis you will see instead of radiolucency in the periapical aspect you will see a diffuse radio opacity in the periapical region so the condensing or usually what happens uh, in condensing mastitis instead of uh, destruction there is bone formation so whenever the tissue resistance is more or the lesion is of a longer duration in those cases there is uh, formation of uh, the bone and you see diffuse radio opacity in the periapical aspect so this is seen outside the lamina dura and you can also see a uh, the widening of periodontal ligament space you can also see loss of lamina dura and then you can see some radiolucency or and followed by radio opacity in the periapical aspect or you can see only radio opacity in the periapical aspect so you have to write diffuse radio opacity seen in the periapical aspect suggestive of condensing ostitis in relation to whichever tooth then coming to infected periapical cyst so in infected per in periapical cyst we could see a well defined uh, radio lucent lesion surrounded by a sclerotic border we could see a sclerotic border uh, here so in uh, infected periapical cyst this border there will be discontinuity of this border because there is uh, infection now it has become acute it has become infected so you will see here there is discontinuity of the periapical of the sclerotic border suggestive of infected periapical cyst. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. If you want to add on to anything pertaining to these lesions, you can also leave a message in the comment section. 
in the subsequent class i will be covering radiographic appearances of all the types of osteomyelitis so stay tuned and thank you so much for watching